Skylar's iPod is connected to my iTunes or whatever my profile, cause it's my old phone. And he's telling me, he's like, Dad, I, I can't figure out how to get into them, but every time that you download a new episode of your podcast, it downloads onto my phone. If I can figure it out, I should totally listen to them. And I'm like, no, you, you totally shouldn't. <laughs> Daddy sometimes has a potty mouth. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Press X to Podcast. It's the podcast from your friends at Cog Connected. I'm your host, Paul Sullivan. Alongside me, I've got the love guru himself. It's Sean Petraschuk. Oh, let's quit the compliment. <laughs> Obviously, you know nothing about my uh, my love life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna say no comment on that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if we need to go any, you know, in depth on this one. <laughs> but I'm no love guru. Probably unnecessary. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> Great movie though. Really good. Sure. Oh, um, is that that's one with Mike uh, uh, Mike Myers? That's yeah, right. the one that killed that his career. Well, uh, no, his was already on its way no. down. I mean, that Isn't... really sealed the deal, though. That flushed. Isn't he busy trying to be like a Canadian mayor or something now? Probably. Probably. Heard he's kind of a dick. I... Wow. Shattering so many dreams <laughs> right now. Harsh words. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can cut out Mike Myers as a possible sponsor. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, true Canadian. We'll just apologize. And we've also got the master of love. It's Trevor Houston. Hello. Hello. How's it going, guys? How you feeling about Valentine's Day? Wow. You know, you know, you called me a love guru and and uh, why it's like so just off the mark is that my wife and I actually we don't really do it. We don't care for it. We're like, why do we need to have this one day to like spend a ridiculous amount of money to pretend like we actually like each other? It is it's a total hallmark. hallmark. Yeah, it is. There you go. Yeah. The hallmark but, holiday. But you, Trev, like you're like, I mean, not newly, newly wed, but I mean, you're still in like the the early stages. I mean, even you too, Paul. I mean. I've been with my wife for like 16 years. I mean, <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> well, no, but it's just like, I don't need to go on like, I mean, the way I look at it now, 16 years in is like, look, if I'm going to go buy her a box of chocolates and she eats it all, I'm going to see that happen. And I'm, I'm going to have to pay for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's better than it's for me to be like, let's just avoid the chocolate altogether. Kick her at like 5 a.m. and go, hey, you better get your ass to the gym. Like that, that's better. That is love. That <laughs> yeah, is right. love. My wife would kick my fucking ass. I'm, I talk a big game, but it's none of this is true. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, we don't really do Valentine's either. It's, I don't know. It's just not worth fighting the crowd and all that. I'll just make the wife a nice meal and that'll be it. Yep. Yeah, that's the way yeah, to do it. Yeah, we don't go out for dinner on Valentine's. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Everywhere's booked up. It's not so... I find usually we're we're away right around uh, Valentine's Day. Like we we're in we we're in Vancouver Island last year, Montreal the year before. So we always seem to be away around Valentine's Day, and so we always say, "Well, we'll celebrate Valentine's Day with our trip. Like we won't get anything for each other. We'll we'll just we'll, it'll be our trip. That'll be our way of celebrating it." And so I usually get something, maybe a card, um, ah, something small. But yeah, we don't. We don't uh, we don't do it up big. That's for sure. There's a guy I know that does Valentine's Day right. He uh, he's married, but he and his wife and all their friends go out to the classy, classy old spaghetti factory for what they like to call <laughs> ribbon tines. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whereupon you enter the old spaghetti factory, which for those who don't know is a very cheap Italian restaurant. Uh, here in Vancouver. I would, I would, I, I kind of balk at the idea of you calling it Italian. Even it's, it's just so bad. It is awful, but they do make fast, ribs. Fast food. <clears throat> so what this group of people does is, uh, sits down or they at the front of the old spaghetti factory. There's a scale, so you weigh yourself when you come in, and you sit no, down at the table. Don't. And you eat as many ribs as you possibly can. <laughs> you keep going until there's no more space for ribs. Then Whoever everybody weighs, weighs the most out. wins. <laughs> Wait, everybody old spaghetti w- factory has ribs. <laughs> yes, they have ribs. <laughs> Whoever gains the most weight wins, right? Whoever gains the least weight pays. Oh shit! Yeah. So there's a- oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so you're just watching Buddy next to you stuff his face, and you're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what a it's stupid game. It's the most <laughs> self-destructive thing you can possibly do to your body. That's amazing. Oh my god, we should totally do that. <laughs> I knew you'd be on board, Sean. I'm in. <laughs> I am so in. Holy crap! <laughs> we're already off. We're we're off track. We're off the rails already. <laughs> Especially considering we're supposed to be talking about video games. Well, well, why don't we talk about video games? Did you guys play any video games? Did I play any video games? Are we gonna, we're going into that first? Yeah, you better believe it. Oh man, I, this is this is we're we're turning the game on its head here. I was not prepared. Hey, we got to keep the listeners guessing. That's true. That's true. Um, I played some games. Uh, I continued to play Rhyme to the point where I don't actually understand what the fuck this game wants from me. Um, I was trying to explain to my wife about, you know, like, it's just very random in its scope. Like, you're, you just, you don't really know what's going on. You're not really sure of the story that it's trying to tell. And she thought she was extremely funny by saying that they should have named it. Uh, with something along the lines of um, no rhyme, no reason. I'm like, that's stupid, Karen. It wasn't actually very funny. <laughs> but I can't, there's no rhyme, no reason to any of how this game works. So I'm probably going to finish it, but it kind of lost my attention. Um, I actually jumped back in, surprisingly. I mean, because this is a game that I believe it came out in Crepes 2015, I think. But I jumped into Dying Light again. And Ooh. I forgot how good of a game it is. It's a really, really good game. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, um, funny enough, I mean, the reason I jumped into it, um, I, I at this point, I, I can't say too much. Um, but one of the uh, clients that I'm working with currently um, are former Techland guys uh, that did work on Dying Light. And the, the game that they're working on has nothing to do with Dying Light at all. But it just kind of put the light bulb off in my head where I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't really get as far into that game as I would have liked. So I jumped back into it and man, I'm loving it. I forgot how fucking rad it is. It's a really cool game. Yeah. The whole day night thing in, in dying light is pretty awesome. It's terrifying at night. Like some of like the, the hunters or whatever, like the real nasty ones, like I'm hightailing it just, and I like, there's one, I remember one part where I'm just, I'm going as fast as I can and I can see, I can see the door that I need to reach. And I, I'm getting there just in time where, I mean, you know, if you were playing it any sort of like AR, you know, like where you've got all sorts of, or 4D even, you know, like where they have like air blowing at you, I'd feel this thing like breathing down the back of my neck and my heartbeat is like pounding. My palms are sweaty. I mean, a game that does that to you as you play it, I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. That's kind of, you know, those are the best of games for me. I mean, I do love those sort of more chill, laid back type experiences. But when a game can get your heart rate going and like really kind of sink you into it, I mean, there's not a lot of games that can really do that. So, I mean, I guess that's something special as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know, it was just kind of one of those games. I mean, I think it reviewed well, uh, if I remember right. Like, No, it did, for sure. Yeah, overall it did well, but it kind of disappeared from, um, you know, uh, quickly enough from the conversation and they're still updating it. I remember about like five or six months ago, they announced that they were doing 12 free DLC type editions wow. that they're still, I mean, it's, it's kind of that uh, like Ubisoft, right? Like the games as a service where, you know, when you buy a game, you can expect to get two years or three years out of it with content, constant content drops. Right. So I haven't done, I haven't gotten into any anything of what they've uh, they've added yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to. I think I'm going to spend another like I'm going to get into it again. I can feel myself kind of sinking in that hole, so I expect another like 40 hours into this one. Yeah, I remember reading that the DLC for that game was really different from the main game. There's a lot more uh, terrain to cover and a lot more open space, so it's a little less the the city, a little more the countryside. Yeah, the following, I think it was called, which is like they introduced like dune buggies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Inside the city is more of like the parkour aspect, running around and jumping over tops of buildings and stuff like that. But um, I just think, I mean, I remember because I'd gotten into it and it's one of those games where it's been so long um, since I've gotten into it that uh, I'm starting again from the beginning. And, uh, you know, I mean it's been long enough that it feels new again. So I don't have that. You know, sometimes when you jump back into a game where you, you started, you gave up and you're like, ah, fuck, I really got to go back to this game. And you get Mm -hmm. back in there 
And when you're an hour or two in, you're like, oh, I feel like I've done all this before. Um, I'm not getting that. It's been long enough where it's like watching a movie you haven't watched in five years. And you're like, you know, you can't remember all the spots that you love and everything else. So it's feeling new and it's holding up. It looks really good still. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of I'm really excited to actually get further into it. I almost didn't actually want to come upstairs to do the podcast. (laughs) No offense. Usually I really hate crafting in games, but I think Dying Light really did it correctly in that it feels really oppressive and frantic because you're having to repair your items and do all these things while things are bearing down onto you. So I yeah. think they, that's yeah, and, the best and that's part of a, that game. That, yeah, and that's a stressful dynamic I don't usually take well to, but I agree the, the way it's done. I mean, it's intuitive in how you do it. So yeah, you're kind of frantic, but it's not hard to actually make things happen on the fly. Yep. So it's kind of like that perfect balance of it, I find. Cool. Anything else, Sean? Um, I play Guitar Hero Live with my kid. He's getting oh, pretty such, good. That is such an underrated game. Like it, it almost makes me sad because it didn't do too well. Um, but it, oh, it's loads of fun. You know, um, I, I'd actually never even heard of this game before, but um, there is Clone Hero, which is basically, you know, it's it's basically like a, a, a ripped version of a Guitar Hero. But people are constantly adding new tracks and then they've actually it's been updated and adjusted um, where uh, you can add tracks and they can use either like the old style of Guitar Hero or Rock Band Guitar or you can use the new style with the three up, three down and there's constant new additions of music. Um, I think my biggest problem with Guitar Hero Live was that, you know, with Guitar Hero before, if you really like a song and you want to play that song and you get halfway through and you fuck it up because you want 100 it, 100%, you go, okay, I'm going to start over. Well, the way that they had this system, and it's kind of like the microtransaction-ish mm. portion of it in that like, oh, well, you need to buy plays to select your own music. Otherwise, you're, you're playing over the uh, Guitar Hero TV, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can play through the game and earn coins and yeah. buy plays. Well, yeah, I, I, I remember I never got... I never got to the point where I felt I had to like drop any money on anything. Like the progression worked in such a way where you really were rewarded fairly well. I mean, I guess if you're the type that plays the game, you know, eight hours a day and you're nonstop playing Guitar Hero, yeah, you'll probably run out of those those coins pretty quick. But I thought it was still pretty good the way they did it. But you're right, you can't you can't play a, one song a hundred times without <laughs> some kind of consequence. Yeah, and, and I'm the kind of guy that, like, if I got five notes in or six notes in and, like, oh, shit, I already flubbed up, I want to start over, right? If, especially if you're going for that 100%. So I have have not 100%ed a lot of songs, um, you know, in this version as I would have in any of the past versions. But, but I, again, I mean, I don't really play it too much. My kid loves it, um, and he decided to try and step up from from casual, which is only using three buttons, to regular, where you have to use the top and the bottom buttons. And he quit after one song. He was basically like, fuck this shit. <laughs> this is kind of tangentially related, but um, I recently saw a video of a guy getting 100% on Through the Fire and Flames on Expert while blindfolded. <laughs> That's a fucking lie. He didn't I, actually do that. He did. He Holy did. He did it on Twitch. That's insane. I'm, I'll throw the video in the description for, for this. Um, but yeah, it was... My jaw was dropped. Let's just have put it you, that way. Have you ever seen... There's a video of that kid playing... I don't know if it's through the fire and the flames. I can't remember. Um, but he's playing Guitar Hero. And the notes are coming fast and furious. And uh, he he starts like flipping out. Because you can see like him going as fast as he possibly can on the strum bar. And... Um, and you could, he looks like he's starting to cry and he's screaming and he gets through and he gets like 100% and he leans over and drops the guitar. And then when he comes up, it like his hands, his knuckles are all bleeding. Oh and God. so many people, no, no, so many people buy into it. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, that motherfucker just dipped his knuckles in ketchup. This is bullshit. <laughs> it's totally bullshit. And uh, you know, Paul, I'm going to, I will scratch that video up just so you could maybe. You, you can take a look and, mm-hmm. and you, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yep. It's, it's bullshit. The guy I'm talking about, um, at one point, he's got his right hand up by his left playing one of the solos. 
And I'm like, how is he hitting the note still? But then I realized he's using his right elbow to hit the strum bar as he's playing the solo blindfolded. Jesus. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Time on your hands. Holy smokes. Too much time on my hands. Is that in GH Live? No. That's Probably too bad. Not. It should be. It's a great song. <laughs> Fantastic, even. Yeah. So what, who else played video games? So far, we've only gotten through the games I played. Yeah, uh, I played some games. Uh, not too many because I was traveling again, but I played some more SteamWorld Dig. Um, still really loving that game. The writing is awesome. It's really, really witty, witty and charming. Um, looks great. Easy to jump in and out. So, you know, you're flying, you're flying and... You know, you do a couple of loops and then there's some bad turbulence. You just put it away for a while and there's no big deal. Um, <laughs> it's like it never happened. Exactly. Uh, but it's a really satisfying loop to play through. And there's lots of reasons to go out of your way and explore. Um, great game. Really good. Perfect switch game. And trick shot. Yeah. The other thing is trick shot, which is an iOS game. Um, I just randomly found this one when I was bored sitting around in an airport and my switch was dead. So it's a basic physics um, related game where you're trying to throw a ball into a box and it just escalates and gets more, more complicated as you go around bouncing the ball and, and arcing it. And you end up with uh, portals and fans and things like that, that make it more difficult to hit the box. Um, but it is so goddamn satisfying to really nail a shot and, you know, get that swish on the ball into the box and it's free, so it's, and see, it, it's awesome. And that's, a, that's surprising to me because, in, in a sense, because it's so rare to hear people go that they find a mobile game, like, satisfying. There's usually, like, you know, because most of mobile games, their money, you know, is in the whole free-to-play, premium, mm -hmm. you know, freemium, if you know, style uh, of game. So to find a, a genuine game that, like, people are like, yep, I walked away actually pretty satisfied with that is pretty rare. So that's enough to intrigue me to the point where I might actually try it. Yeah, and it's like a 20-second loop. There's like literally no investment in this game. If you've got 30 seconds to spare, you can fire it up and throw a ball around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And that was it. That's all the time I had to play games, sadly. That, man, thinking about it, like I don't know if I will install that because that's the kind of game that keeps me on the shitter long after I've finished my shit, you know? Mm. Like I just... That's the only time I ever pick up my mobile to like do anything game related. And so, yeah, maybe I won't install it. <laughs> I don't need my wife checking on me. Like, you've been in the bathroom for like a half hour. Is everything okay? <laughs> no, Karen. Everything is not okay. Don't you laugh. You both know that you sat on the toilet longer than you've needed to because of your phone. It's oh, happened to everybody. Always. Absolutely. Always. I, I don't go unless I bring the phone. <laughs> Like, otherwise, I, it's the, I, otherwise, it's the fastest shit ever. <laughs> I could have to go real badly, but fuck that. I will find my phone before I have to go. <laughs> oh, my God. Me, too. I have your phone. Fuck. <laughs> Karen, Karen will notice me. Like, I'm basically squeezing my legs together. She's like, why don't you just go to the bathroom? I need my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it relaxes me, all right? <laughs> How pitiful is our society at this point? It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. It's disgusting. <laughs> well, listen, did you ever have like a magazine rack? It's just replaced the magazines that, that you used to read. While, you know, <laughs> while taking a crud. It's, okay. It really, that reminds me, this is, we're going to go off on a quick tangent here. Years and years ago, living with my roommate. So it would have been in like 2001, 2002. Uh, we have some buddies over um, for uh, uh, like a WWF at the time. I think it was still WWF. It was the Royal Rumble. We were having them over for a pay-per-view. And um, my roomie was a little bit of a... Uh, my roomie was a little bit of a, a perv. <laughs> and so in the magazine rack, the first couple magazines you saw were like National Geographic or some garbage. But then you go a little bit deeper. And uh, sure enough, the roomie has the porn in there. And uh, <laughs> so, no, but the beauty of... My buddy brings his brother along. And his brother DJ is amazing he's like the coolest guy uh, he has down syndrome and so he just kind of doesn't have a filter right like he just kind of says what's <laughs> on his mind and i i loved i loved him because he, he because he was just so free always so happy like the nicest kid anyway 
DJ goes to use the bathroom, and we're all watching the show, not thinking anything about it. And uh, DJ comes back out of the bathroom, and uh, he's like, uh, "Hey guys, uh, I found a, uh, I found this magazine." In the bathroom, um, I'm wondering if either one of you, whoever it belongs to, would allow me to have this because I totally <laughs> masturbate to this. And just watch <laughs> the color drain out of my roommate's face, <laughs> whose name I'm not going to give. If he listens to this, he's just going to laugh because he's going to be like, fuck, I remember that. <laughs> but Somebody remember. might pass three National Geographics. Oh my God. You know, I mean, again, I mean, we were all in our early 20s, so we didn't really think too much of it apart from like, yeah, of course that's in there. But at that moment in time, just watching his face just go like, I can't remember if it like the blood drained and it went white or if he just went beat, beat red. But either way, there was an exceptional amount of embarrassment in that moment. So yeah, magazine racks and bathrooms. I guess that's where that came from. <laughs> what about you, Trev? You play any games? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle for the Switch. Uh, mm. I have been, I have been hooked to that game all week. Like it's the only game I played, and it makes me think back to our Game of the Year uh, episodes. And it really should have cracked our top ten. Like it is that good. Loads of depth, tons of strategy. It's cute. It's addictive. Um, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. So um, that's been pretty much occupying the bulk of my gaming this past week. It did win our best surprise, if I remember correctly. Did it win? It did it win something? I didn't. Not sure if we handed any awards. Yeah, but, I th- um, I'm pretty sure it won best surprise. I might be mistaken though. But yeah, great yeah. game. Yeah, I'd have to check on that. But yeah, it's it's um, so underrated, and I don't seem to know a lot of people that have played it. I think it just gets sort of passed over. It's sort of forgotten with, with Zelda and Odyssey. So, um, I think it's cool yeah. that it's a game that it, it's a game that like you coming into it as someone who's not really a strategy fan in any way, shape or form. And it's, it's sucked you in, which is really, yeah. really cool. I'm not, I'm not a turn-based guy. Like I'm not a big XCOM fan or anything like that, but this, that game's really sort of, uh, reeled me in for sure. Maybe yeah, it's I love it. Do you identify with the rabbits in any way? <laughs> well, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. <laughs> My thing with that game is I kind of got um fatigue on it around like the fourth or fifth world. I was kind of I was kind of over it. It didn't seem like I was progressing too much in terms of um uh, skills and stuff, and it was it, it felt a little repetitive. Um but that core gameplay is really good. Well, yeah, I found I hit a bit of a wall in the in the third world, so I went back and I've been doing some of the challenges from the first and second world, and, and I've just enjoyed kind of going back through the lab- levels, finding mm-hmm. finding like those those magical crates that I missed, and and uh, just sort of taking my time. It's one of those games where I'm really slowly plodding along and and enjoying every little bit of it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Should we talk about the news? I was waiting for Trevor there. I was like, that silence. I'm waiting for Trevor to... Oh, they have a soundbite. The news, the news, the news. <laughs> there he is. Thank God. I thought we lost him. So... What are, what's in the news? Well, there's some stuff. Um, it sounds like Nintendo's saying that their online service will be worth the wait. Do be... either of you believe them? What? Uh... Worth the wait to be like every other online service that's been around for fucking ever? Well, and not if we have to use that stupid smartphone app to talk to people. Like, is I hear that's I hear that's still a go that you have to like plug in oh, a mic on God. your phone, and that's how you're going to have to talk to people is through your phone. That is just such a bad fucking idea. Like, I really hope that that is wrong. That from now until this thing comes out in September, that they will have figured out a way that we can plug in a mic into our Nintendo Switch and talk to people like we can on Xbox Live, like we can on the PlayStation. Like I really hope that that's not the plan. So here's the thing about that. Somebody was digging around in the Splatoon 2 code, and it turns out there are actually hooks for that in the game, for voice chat. And you can do it if you connect a bunch of switches over a LAN. You just can't do it over the network. It's like it was disabled because Nintendo said so. Hmm. I... I you know I don't get their angle here, 
um, in terms of like, it's not like they don't have the tech. You know what I mean? Obviously, this sort of thing's been around forever. Mm-hmm. At, what are you doing? I mean, and again, I mean, I own a Switch too, and I, I love it. You know what I mean? But what are you doing that is so goddamn special that you have not figured it out yet? Like, what are you doing? I don't, I don't get it. And I mean, you know, for me, um, Xbox Live, uh, PlayStation Plus are no brainers. Even if I don't spend a lot of time playing online, uh, usually the games that are offered up on the service or, or the discounts, you know, cause they always, you know, for whatever, whatever I spend per month, um, for my online fee, I'm, undoubtedly I'm going to end up buying a game that's going to be, oh, you only get it if you've got gold or you only get it if you've got PSN Plus. You know what I mean? This is the first time where I'm I'm going to sit back and wait to see what the hell it's all about because I just... They make great games, but they, they can't figure out to what I feel is a basic service at this point. Yeah, they, they're, there's so much we don't know about it, though. Like, I mean... Um, well, one thing I do like is the price. 20 bucks for a year. So, I mean, that's... That's what a third of the price that we pay for uh, PS Plus and, and uh, Xbox Gold, mm-hmm. Xbox Live. So I mean, I like the price point, but again, yeah. we, don't know, we don't know if that's going to include like, will we be able to access things like Netflix, YouTube? Uh, will we have access to those kind of apps? Will we do get care? free? Will we get free games, free monthly games like we do on on PlayStation and Xbox? Will we have access to retro games? Like, there's just so many questions about this thing. Do you do you care though? Honestly, I mean, it's funny. I see these arguments every now and then about um, you know the fact that the Switch doesn't have Netflix, for example. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I have like 19 other fucking places that I can get Netflix right now. <laughs> I kind of don't give a shit. I want them to focus on making a a, a, a a service where I can play with my friends with relative ease and have voice chat things that are as far as i'm concerned if i'm paying i mean and to be honest whether it's 20 bucks a year 50 bucks a year i mean it seems to me as that should be a base that's a very simple basic thing i don't give a shit about netflix at this point i just want that service to work for me no i know i i get that but i'm my point being is just like access to some of those apps like it would be nice if you can you can check those kind of things maybe your email maybe check your email on your switch like how cool would that be um, I mean, I would like it if I could jump onto a plane and not have to haul, like, you know, my tablet or or my laptop and my Switch can be that, like, that standalone, the device that does everything for me. Like, that would be incredibly cool. It would need better so you, battery power, but it would be so you cool want it, if you it want had it to those be kind of capabilities. An iPad that plays video games. And, and Netflix and YouTube. And <laughs> it does everything. <laughs> Like, wouldn't that be an amazing online service that it did that? Yeah, of course you want the games to play properly and all that. But, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, we just don't know. There's a lot of questions. I don't have a lot of faith that it's going to be wonderful. I hope it yeah, will be. I I have no faith in this. Um, simply because they've taken that step back from um, having usernames and things like that so you could find your friends to going back to friend codes with the switch. I, yeah. I don't understand why you would possibly do that. It makes no sense. Yeah. It seems very backwards. Yeah, I that one. I'm kind of, I, and I still, I, I know that there's been rumbling of whether or not it's coming, but um, there has been rumbling for a long time that Nintendo has their own version of, uh, of an achievement system on the way and uh, i mean i don't play games Mm. specifically just to get achievements i mean there's the odd game that i get really latched into um but you can't deny that you know as a gamer it's kind of one of those things that people really enjoy and it surprises me that they've taken so long to adapt to that so i wonder if that might be part of it you know okay here we go we're doing everything all at once we're going online we're dropping you know our, our achievement system you know, I mean, what is going to make it worth the wait apart from the fact that we can connect online? We'll see. We'll see. I, th- I think you could be onto something. That would be an instant sort of um, announcement that would get people excited about the online service. If it included, I, like if they rolled out and as part of the online service, there'll be achievements. Like, you know, people go, woo, yay, that's amazing. Especially if it was weird that. in Nintendo achievements. Um, you know, accompanied by some kind of uh, cutesy Nintendo um, 
statues or something for getting achievements or for completing all the achievements in a game, I think people would latch onto that. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they, they've got all those properties at their disposal, right? I mean, who knows what the, you know, I mean, maybe they take an angle like PlayStation does with like the bronze and the, you know, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. I mm-hmm. mean, and they could, like you say, they latch on to like care because they have to do it with their own quirk. Nintendo doesn't do anything like they don't copy anybody. They trailblaze in a sense. I mean, even though this would technically be a copy, I guess, if they were jumping into that system, they'd have to do it their way, like with some sort of twist. Nintendo's not going to be just like, okay, achievements. So yeah, like, you know, whether they use a character based thing where like this character is this and this character is a step above that sort of thing. So you're collecting things. There's there would have to be something more to it than just your base achievement system. Definitely. Speaking of PlayStation, um, the God of War director was out there talking about God of War, believe it or not, um, which is apparently going to feature optional boss fights. I have no idea what that means, but uh, okay. I, you know, I don't know. The more Let's... afraid I get of of like just getting my ass kicked in things and just wanting to get through a story, which obviously this game has like a ton of story. We be you know we we've, we've eked out that much that there's a really cool narrative going on. I'm just gonna run from all the bosses. Oh, fuck them. I just want <laughs> I just want to get through the story. Well, I, I don't <laughs> That's think a it, thing. I don't I don't think it said all the boss fights are optional. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think this has a really simple explanation. If you think about old uh, JRPGs and stuff like that, there's always optional super bosses that you can go and take on if you want to, but are not part of the main story. I'm Which, pretty yeah, sure. You, hmm, I'm pretty sure there, that's what this is. There's a boss I'm thinking of, and oh man, I'm going back. Can't, is it is it Super Mario RPG? There's that one boss that's completely optional that is just. I can't remember what its name is. Like, incredibly, ridiculously, horribly punishing to the point where nobody can freaking beat it. That know. would not surprise me in the slightest. Is it? Is it? I can't. Rem- I can't remember. But, but yeah, no, I see what you're saying, right? Like, or you know, you want a a specific armor set or something, you're gonna have to beat this boss. But I mean, that's like a lot of games these days. A lot of games have that that type of gameplay in them. Yeah, this kind of comes off as a non non-news item to me in a lot of ways i mean he says that there's not going to be a jump button because there's no jumping in god of war and kratos can increase his health bar because of course he can like like what is that well i mean i think we we made a comment about it i'm pretty sure we had chatted about it last week you know certain properties you know some games need to make a lot of a lot of waves in order to get noticed in the news and then other games can like literally fart into a microphone and are like oh my god what does it mean you know and that's kind of what this news is and i guess in a sense i mean you know unless there's something deeper i mean unless there's you know I don't... hey that's what we do in on a weekly basis is fart into microphones and hope people listen to it <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was kidding. Let me cry into my beer now. Yeah. <laughs> Are we already done? I think I feel like we're already done with this one. We're already yeah. done yeah. with this topic. On to the next item. Yeah, keep it going. <laughs> Would you guys believe it if I told you that Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to have Battle Royale? I would. I'd believe it. Well, they said yeah. it's going to. Yeah. Well, you know. Um... I believe alongside that, um, it's saying also that was it that Fear of the Wolves is that car based battle royale, and um, it. I don't want to take anything away from the games like Fortnite and the PUBG. Uh, obviously, they've they've struck gold, but every game now is like trying to you know everybody wants to make that that money right, so they're yeah. all latching onto it and they're all latching onto it really quick. Um, and so as fast as this is showing up, I'm really curious if we're going to hit if we're going to hit just max pressure on this and people are going to be like, oh, my God, another battle royale game. I'm so fucking done. I think we're really close to it already. Um, honestly, I think one triple A game mm-hmm. that's got it in there as a fully baked thing, you know, um, Call of Duty or Red Dead or whichever one it is that comes out first. I think that's going to be it. And everybody else is, you know, just going to be a me too kind of thing 
Well, it's already feel yeah, it's already feeling like me too, you know, in in, in a sense because mm-hmm. you know everybody want like I say everybody wants to cash in on that on that money right now, and I mean there's no denying it's the biggest fucking thing going right now, right? I mean there's been the battle between PUBG and Fortnite. Yeah. You know, for months now, um, you know, the traction that they both get on Twitch and Mixer and everything else. I mean, they're huge fucking games. Um, but everybody now, like literally everybody is adding it in. And it's like I say, it's already hitting, you know, overload, it seems. Yeah, I mean, part of me is kind of wondering size wise how Red Dead would be able to incorporate like their massive single player and their giant open world and also include a battle royale mode which <laughs> which has a giant map well if it, if it's going to be like PUBG or Fortnite it's going to have a giant map um plus doesn't Red Dead have a regular multiplayer uh mode um like sort of a deathmatch type mode like i just how are they going to squeeze all of this into one game you know 200 I mean? gigabytes bitch right like <laughs> that's insane that's gonna yeah, be a imagine? nasty 4k patch right uh, can you, you know can you imagine i don't know how anybody's i don't know how anybody especially yeah like if you've jumped into the 4k zone too i don't know how anybody right now is running a console without an external hard drive like games are fucking ridiculous huge and I get so tired of pulling things out. oh I'm going to delete this so I can install that no nope 4 terabytes or however many I mean, I've got one on the Playstation one on the Xbox yep right? as many I terabytes mean, as I can get it's hooked up yeah it really is because I get yeah. tired of downloading right I get tired of it the real question here is have you guys seen the movie that spurred all this on which is the uh, Japanese no. battle royale movie that's no. a thing? Go watch no. it. It's on Netflix, and we'll talk about it next week. What's it called? Battle Royale. Oh, it's literally called Battle Royale? It is incredible. It is so good. Oh, really? Oh, shit. No. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, I'm, I'm writing this down. It's it's on the list. It's like a really badass Hunger Games. I'm down with oh, this. Battle Royale. I'm down with right. this. Yeah. Check it out. It's super I'm good. surprised Netflix? I didn't know. Right. It's on That's Netflix. Cool. That's a very good recommendation, Paul. Speaking of movies, the first mm-hmm. Venom trailer just dropped. Ooh. <laughs> Did anyone understand a word Tom Hardy said? <laughs> <laughs> yes, every little bit. Of no. It. <laughs> you know, it's funny, like, people, like, depending on the movie he's in, obviously some movies, he's meant to sound muffled. You know what I mean? We, we already know. But... Even when he's in a movie where he's just supposed to talk like a normal fucking human being, that guy's a mumbler. I can barely ever understand anything that comes out of fucking Tom Hardy's mouth. <laughs> Dunkirk was the worst for that. I was like, what is happening? Oh, Anytime it's showing his that. face Do not spoil that. On I need okay, so, to watch that. So I'm not the only one. Like I honestly, I for a while there, like I honestly thought that I was alone in like Tom Hardy is a mumbler. Why do people love him so much? He did another movie with uh shia labeouf where they were uh they were bootleggers or they did moonshine i can't remember what the name of that movie is a uh, great movie but again another movie where it's just i'm like i'm like rewind and turn on the subtitles i can't understand tom hardy again he's also got a thing for having a mask over his face you know he's got it in dunkirk he's got it in batman He's going to yep. have it in Venom. You're definitely not going to understand Venom. Well, how do we know? Because, you know, we saw a fucking Venom trailer with no fucking Venom. <laughs> Are you uh, upset, Sean? No, you know what? They literally well, it's just... it's supposed to be a teaser. It's a teaser. It is. So. It's a teaser. And they literally just finished filming. Um, you know, I actually saw... I think somebody on Twitter or, or, or somewhere was just like laughing about the fact that like how angry fans are about seeing a Venom trailer with no Venom. And I'll admit that I thought it was a bit odd that maybe they would have pushed even for a second, like just for that flash, that one second, two second flash. And you're like, oh shit, here it comes and not put much else into it. But they literally have not done the CG yet. Yeah, I bet they can't figure it out how to make it look believable. Well, they better. It comes out this October, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's that's still a long time away, right? I mean, we're looking at eight months away. So they fit, they wrapped on filming, and now they go in with the CG and, and, and everything else. So, I mean, it wasn't necessarily meant to show you Venom, but I'm just surprised they didn't even give you a tease. You yeah. know, something's 
something slight. Hey, they just they know you're going to be in that theater. So, you know, you damn right. Whatever. I'm going to be in that theater. Oh, yeah, oh, for yeah, sure. For sure. <laughs> it's Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> I might you have, have to, to go, go back for multiple viewings so you can hear what he said. No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip the whole process and go to one of those viewings where they have it for the hearing impaired. So they put subtitles on everything, and I just just gonna erase myself from having that problem altogether. <laughs> did you Did you guys ever see the movie Bronson that he play? He plays like this one of the most violent prisoners in the UK, and it's an older movie. I want to say it's about ten years old, but I remember that was one of my first Tom Hardy movies where. Um, where I had a chance to see him in action. And that's it's a pretty good movie. If you've never seen Bronson, it's worth checking out. It's, it's super violent, but uh, but it's entertaining as all hell. And it's based off a true story of like one of the most violent prisoners ever. So It was on Netflix, I remember. And I never actually watched it, but I remember seeing it. Like he's like the, 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 the cover for the movie was like, him like he's like bald headed and yeah, like boxing it. gloves or some shit and mm-hmm. like tattoos all yep. over his chest or whatever yeah. like he looks like really fucking mean yeah and he is <laughs> he's pretty mean and fucked up and angry and uh yeah it's an interesting sort of movie about his uh his life and him surviving and uh, uh mean fucked jails. up and angry so like yeah, an exactly. average tom hardy movie there you go <laughs> put it on the list put it on <laughs> yeah, the list sure. <laughs> Our final piece of news is that GTA 5 is the third best-selling game ever. That's crazy. 90 yeah. million units. That well that's what's more crazy. Third best-selling game ever. What I, like that's a huge accomplishment, so like, you know, props to Rockstar on that. Behind but just realizing Minecraft? what third best-selling means, 90 fucking million. Yeah, like it's third to Minecraft and Tetris. Like like Tetris was in every single household for a while. That and so. and and Minecraft is on iPads and on phones and on you know like or some version of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like GTA is like PC slash console. Period. You don't get GTA Five on your iPad, you know. So like that ninety million is a real accomplishment. That's a lot of frigging copies. Yeah, it's that's incredible. That's people buying it from, you know, last gen to current gen to like, oh shit, and they finally released it on PC, so they're jumping to PC. I mean, this is multiple copies in one buyer's hands even, right? And then the fact that any game is, you know, I mean, I, there's very few games that I love enough where I'm like, I'm going to buy it again on this, or I'm going to buy it again on that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, props to Rockstar, man. That's a huge, huge accomplishment. Yeah, it's it's super impressive. Like it makes me want like I guess everybody I know who's a gamer who doesn't really own like that, that game. They, I really like that they threw in um when they came out on the PS4 generation, the first person mode. I think that makes that game a totally different experience. If you guys haven't tried that, um the first person mode is pretty good actually. I tried it briefly, but I really couldn't get into it. I needed to play it in its sort of original form i just couldn't get into the first person mode it totally changes the experience for sure um but as somebody who had already played gta 5 all the way through i don't know it made it a little more interesting to go back to it's definitely definitely like a a different dynamic like not something you would expect out of gta you know what i mean like you know after playing it you know the the original way and then jumping in a first person i mean i i could see that being almost feeling like a a brand new experience even if you have mm-hmm. already made your way through the story so congrats now what <laughs> red dead 2 red dead 2 they just keep they just keep piling on to that money tra- just <laughs> just the money just keeps piling up for take 2 and rockstar no like, shit holy eh? smokes i'd like to you know, I mean, if I was ever going to rob a money truck, that might be the one. And what's amazing, too, is they don't seem to have a ton of marketing. Like, they they, they don't make much of an appearance at E3 at all. In fact, does Rockstar even go to E3? Like, I don't recall ever going to a Rockstar appointment in, like, eight E3s that I've been to. I don't think I've ever been to a Rockstar appointment or, like, seen a big Rockstar booth or anything. Like, it doesn't seem like they feel the need to really market and push their games they let the games sell themselves well you know i think i think um rockstar um 
in a, in a sense, I mean, this was actually, you know, originally when we had COD on the, like, the docket for today, um, in, you know, talking about Black Ops 4, you know, the rumors or the announcement, that sort of thing. I almost wonder if Rockstar and GTA specifically are very much in the same boat in that there's... There's core gamers, people who are just dedicated to the news. They want to know everything about everything that's going on. And then there's just like those dudes, you know, like the COD bros, for example, that just pick up a game once or twice a year. GTA has that draw. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like people who will, who've never even heard of IGN, right? But they have an Xbox at home because, you know, when I was a kid, I had a Nintendo and then I bought an Xbox and I play Call of Duty and I play Grand Theft Auto, you know, like it, they have that sort of, of legacy attached to them. They don't need to do the marketing. It's just going to happen for them. Yeah. What? There's a new GTA. Boom. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. I think maybe Red Dead might be Red Dead doesn't do those same kinds of numbers and it won't do those same kinds of numbers, you know, with Red Dead 2. Mostly because it doesn't have that legacy attached to it. But if, or more appropriately when, they drop GTA 6, don't expect it to do anything other than insane numbers right out the yeah. gate. Because all those people, like I say, who are, you know, they don't pay attention to the news, but they walk into Best Buy and they see, or they turn on their console and they look at the store and they're like, oh shit, there's a new GTA. Like it's an instant buy, right? Mm -hmm. Same reason yeah. Madden sells bazillions every year. Yeah, 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 same I, people I, buying them. Absolutely. I think you're, I think you're right. Red Dead's not sort of a household name, but oof, I think it, I, I think it may inch closer to that this year with with Red Dead too. I mean, it, GTA wasn't necessarily an overnight success. Like it took took a while to build the fame, to build the reputation for it to truly be to, to get for it to become a ninety million seller. Um, but I think Red Dead 2, it could be on that path to doing really well. I mean, what would be a success for Red Dead 2? 20 million? 30 million? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess you'd have to have the numbers for what the original Red Dead sold, which I'm yeah, not, I don't, I I'm don't not know. sure. I don't know. Um, but I imagine it did quite well. Um, but it's also one of those games that kind of, it was a bit of a slow burn in terms of like, it sold well to begin with, but people talked about it, right? And it was it was a game that benefited from people going, have you played this game yet? You know, um, but GTA, I mean, it was built on controversy because at the time there were no games that were really, really as controversial, right? That was the type of, remember, I'm pretty sure it was not at some point GTA in the news where it's like, you know, you have angry parents going, why are you selling this to my children? You know, <laughs> because they're too lazy to go to the store with their kid and, you know, not let their kid buy a game that's rated mature, right? It and was the catalyst for that, that whole um, legal battle in the States, basically. Yeah, Wasn't well, it? there you go. Exactly, right? I mean... That wasn't like the origination of like the ESRB, was it? Like, is that how it? It wasn't over. Like, was GTA a Kickstarter for that sort of thing? Um, I don't know if it was for the ESRB, but I know it was legally. There were a lot of lawmakers in Washington that wanted it out of stores or wanted it uh, unsellable to kids or unsellable um, in the states. Obviously, that didn't happen because the claims were pretty crazy. Um, but I think it was the reason that that whole conversation came about. Yeah, so the sales I have here, Red Dead sold six million on PS3 and another six million on Xbox 360. I don't have any other figures, so v VG charts. Yeah, I'm just looking at VG charts right now. So no, I, yeah, I mean, I'm seeing as of February 2017, Red Dead Redemption has shipped over 15 million units, which is respectable. Oh yeah, Very. for sure. But it's not 90. 90 no. <laughs> not even close. I wouldn't be surprised wow. to see RDR2 double that. Get to 30. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised at all. Well, I mean, you know, going hand in hand with the fact that, you know, gaming gets bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. And, you know, there's more consoles in homes than ever before. Um, it kind of only makes sense. Uh and yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's kind of one of those things that like the people who maybe missed out first round, who have heard from friends, like how great the first one was, they're all going to jump on this without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Speaking of releases, let's talk about the ones for this week. Yeah, there's there, a bunch. There are actually quite a few. Uh, there are a lot, actually. We're starting yeah. to ramp up already. 
God help us. Um, the, pol- the piles of shame are not getting smaller, but the games are still coming in. Um, <laughs> so true. <laughs> my God. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 9. I'm which honestly is... surprised that there's only nine of them. Well, only. I was going to say, which is a game that, <laughs> that won't be entering my pile of shame because who fucking cares about Dynasty Warriors anymore? Well, hey, I mean, uh, let's, my, put it, let's put it... No, I was just say let's put it this way. Like, Dynasty Warriors is one of those games that, like, when we would, you know, call it out for a review, like, hey, guys, we've got a copy of Dynasty Warriors 57 in. Who wants to review it? And it's fucking crickets because nobody wants to fucking review this game anymore. Like, it's what are you doing nine games in that people give a shit about? Dynasty Warriors 4 was cool when the PS2 came out, and I played that a bit, and... But then I forgot about the series because they were all the same. Well, Mario yeah. Mario uh, reviewed it for us, and by the time this pod goes live, um, our review will be live, and he is going to give it an eighty uh, out of a hundred. And he he quite liked it. He quite enjoyed it. He uh, liked the sort of uh, it took more of an open world um, take, but I mean <laughs> it's still a hack and slasher, um, but it's got more of sort of an open world spin to it, and he quite liked it in fact we were bantering back and forth because he did want to go with a slightly higher score but he did have a lot of negatives and the negatives uh drew some of some of his score down a bit but um but yeah that that uh that review will be live on wednesday on cogconnected.com at cog connected on twitter uh cog connected on instagram cog connected on facebook your company man right here <laughs> thank you trevor i was I was trying to figure out how to squeeze that in, and I knew you'd get it done. I'd get it in. (laughs) Bill's got to get paid, son. Bill's got to get paid. (laughs) Click on that Dynasty Warriors review and all the ads. Click on (laughs) Click on all the ads, yeah. Watch the fun Viagra videos. (laughs) Whatever they are, I don't know. You read Trevor... You realize those ads are completely targeted, right? So you're the only guy seeing the Viagra ads. <laughs> <Wait, what? laughs> oh, is, is that why the, the, the porn ads come up? <laughs> Wait, let's see what comes up now. Oh, uh, that's so fucking good. <laughs> that's classic. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> anyway, what else is coming up? <laughs> Well, we've got a couple other big ones. <laughs> what else um, is coming out? We've got Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah! <laughs> um. Do you realize that had a 20 gig day one patch that came out today? Like 20 gigs. 20, 20 gigs. I got a message from Derek. Derek's like, um, Trevor, I'm going to need more time with this review. I'm like, well... Why? Like it's we got to have that in tonight. Well, that you see, there's this 20 gig patch that came out, and the game's quite a bit different now. <laughs> Dear and God. it's a huge okay. game. It's huge. It's like, not a tiny game. The 20 gig patch. Holy fuck! Was this on either of your radars? I feel like it came out no. of nowhere. No, I saw it. Excuse me. I saw it not last year. I think I believe two years ago at E3, and um. It looked pretty rough at the time, but you could tell how big they wanted it to be. Um, I know that now it looks absolutely um, stunning um, Mm -hmm. from anybody that's played it. Um, I know, or I'm curious if, um, I've kind of been keeping up on the news on this one. Um, I don't know a lot about the situation, but apparently somebody... Uh, high up involved in the development of this game one or two people um have some uh generally what most people might consider shitty opinions um and i ha- i wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of that kind of bubble to the surface as these reviews start to pop up um people are thinking the game's going to be good but anyways yeah this guy apparently a couple guys i don't know if they were involved necessarily gamergate specifically but there was some there's some ugly stuff that i have a feeling is going to kind of rear its head as this game is supposed to have its time in the sun um which is a shame in a sense because you want a good game to stand out as a good game but um if this news that you know that's kind of been bubbling in the background starts to come up it might actually take away from the game itself because yeah i mean from what i've heard 
the game proper is really freaking cool and really good. And that's really what matters. I mean, God, I mean, have your political opinions and your opinions on other things as much as you want. But if the game is good, the game is good. Just let it stand on its own and don't let that other bullshit get to you. Honestly. Yeah, and exactly. And and I've seen, I've already seen bubblings where people are going, oh, I'm disappointed with the fact that this game's going to get so much positive press when the people who made it are so shitty. Okay, well, can you call the people out for being shitty, but then also compliment the game on being a good game? Like, those right. are two separate entities. You know, I guess in, in, in one sense is like, if the game sells, these guys are being rewarded for the, you know... For being, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're being rewarded for being shitty people. They're being rewarded for making a good game. I don't know. It's a tough argument to get into, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't doubt if next week, you know, maybe, you know, maybe next week we go, oh, shit, did you hear the news about Kingdom Come Deliverance? Right? Like, you know, maybe it'll get buried. Who knows? But I noticed, I've, I've noticed it bubbling up kind of just on the sidelines over the past couple of days. So. I'm, I'm just half expecting, you know, for there to be like that, you know, here comes the game, the game drops and all of a sudden, boom, all this news kind of comes out and ends up being a big topic of discussion. I will be keeping my eyes on that for sure for next week. But what else is coming out this week? Well, there's actually quite a few more things. Uh, we've got Owlboy coming out on the Switch, PS4 and Xbox One, which uh, came out last year, I think, last year or the year before yep. on PC. Oh, PC. And, yep. and, and it's just and, a stunning pixel art in this game. Looks yeah, really Nick, cool. Nick reviewed it for COG. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nick reviewed it for COG and it, he scored it quite well. And generally, like across the board, it got really, you know, uh, really great scores. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to get it on. Like for me, my go to on this is the Switch. Hands oh my God, down. yes. This Absolutely. Is a, this is another game built for Switch. So, like, I mean, I don't have an opinion on the game proper yet because I haven't played it, but I'm super, super pumped to get it on the Switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't played it yet either, but Nick gave it a gave it back. This is, yeah, November 2016. He gave it a 90. That's that's impressive. Yeah, pretty glowing score. We've also got Fee, which is that um, very short excursion of EA into the land of the Indies. Um, then they went right back to what they did before. But uh, hopefully fee's good. Well, hey, let's let's give EA. You know, we we've spent an, a lot of time shitting on them, um, and deservedly so. But they were also responsible for making sure that we all got our hands on Unravel, which is one of the best games ever. It's it's such an endearing and charming game. Um, I'm kind of hoping that that's what we're going to get out of. Is it fee or fay? I don't know. But no, F E. I'm gonna yeah. call it FE Either from way, now on. Yeah, exactly. Either way, like hey. I'm I'm intrigued by it. Is Fuck. that not like is, uh, on the on the periodic table, is that not iron? It is iron. Yeah, I'm gonna call it iron oh, from now on. Call. People are gonna be like, what are you talking about? You know, iron code. F E. I just wanted to drop science bombs on y'all. <laughs> well done. <laughs> science bombs, yo. Yo. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know what? I, I that one kind of. I remember seeing the initial trailer for it. Um, I was intrigued by it. Uh, so yeah, this is one that I, I'm pretty sure. Like, if I'm gonna make, oh man, I was gonna say like, if I'm gonna make any purchases this week, I have a feeling I've got three purchases on my radar this week. Owl Boy, Dynasty Warriors Iron. Nine. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, Owl Boy, Iron, and uh, the next game that we're gonna talk about. Which is Secret of Mana, the yeah, remake. Yeah, boy. On yeah. Windows, PS4, and Vita. <laughs> For some reason, Vita. <laughs> the Vita still still stands strong. Why is it this on Switch? I don't get it. Maybe it will you, be. If you have is it a, Vita, a licensing you thing? I don't know where it is. Like, if you had to ask me to go find my Vita, I don't think I could track it down. It would take me a little bit of a search. Just a second. Just a second. <laughs> yeah. Found it. <laughs> I'll be back in 20 because that's how long it will take me to find mine. I don't play mine all that much. You know, the funny thing is, is pre-Switch. Like never. <laughs> Pre-Switch, I played it a lot more. The, it, it, the Switch is taken over from my Vita. The last thing I used my Vita for was for PS4 Remote Play. Oh, really? Which works reasonably well, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the last thing of note this week is the Bayonetta slash Bayonetta 2 uh, package on Switch. Hmm. Which, if you haven't played that, uh, is the the gem in Platinum's cap of uh, sensational action games. Well, as long as yeah, yeah, no, I might have to try. I might have to try that on the Switch. As long as it's better than um, um was it not Platinum that did that? Uh, was it was it? I'm, I'm trying to think here. Was it Activision and Platinum that did that Ninja Turtles game? Oh fuck that game! Oh. That I game expected sucks. more out of Platinum, but it was Platinum, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, fuck that game. They did that Transformers game too, and that one was pretty good. So, that one was better. Uh, which yeah. one was that one? That was. I can't remember what the name of it was. I think it was Ninja Turtles. Fuck this game. Yeah. Actually, speaking of fucking Ninja Turtles, <laughs> oh, no, no. which is the weirdest oh, of segues. Don't get me going on this. You know what I'm talking about, don't yes. you? Yes. That uh, I don't. Is it Cartoon Network? I don't know who it was, but like or Nickelodeon, I think. Um, but that new version uh, that they want to go with of the Ninja Turtles and like Splinter is the short, fat, like stupid. It just doesn't work. And then they have like each turtle is like a different species of turtle and they just look awful. And it was just like, I, I believe this actually came out like what, two weeks ago. But the second I saw it, I'm like, that is a hard nope. Nope. nope I nope, screamed nope, nope. in anguish when I saw it because the. Uh, my childhood of the 90s came flushing back and god it just shit all over it it's so bad it's so bad i mean i get it i mean maybe they're trying to appeal to a new generation but in in a sense i mean like with my kid right like with you know my son's nine he's seen the original the original ninja turtles you know and even he's gonna look at this and go what did the fuck what did they do to the ninja turtles dad (laughs) it's not good (sighs) it is not good we'll never know we can only hope that it fails and fails quick, and they'll just bring back the 1987 designs or whatever, whenever those came out. Yeah. The real Ninja Turtles. The real Ninja Turtles. I wish I had my, I wish I had my hands on an issue number one. Yes, uh, Platinum did Transformers Devastation. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, it, was, uh, it was that cel-shaded one, if you recall correctly, right? Yeah, I, yeah and it's, I it, believe it, I reviewed that one, actually. It was pretty good, I mean... It was yeah. still a platinum game. It was still a platinum game. I mean, in, um, they're not for everybody, I don't think. Um, I, I didn't mind it. But I believe, Paul, you reviewed, actually, Turtles. The, yeah, the, I think I did. Yeah. yeah. And I just remember you basically being less than, far less than impressed. I mean, it looked great and it played fine, but it was very repetitive. Very repetitive. Yeah. yeah. Ah, well. Still not a bad release week. All said and done, it's a pretty good release week. Not bad at all. Not Thanks, bad February. at all. So now we're going to debut a brand new section here on Press X to Podcast. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. What, what are we doing? Yeah, no exactly. These other guys don't actually uh, know what we're going to be doing. Um, we're calling this the Press X Perfect List in which we are going to take the minimum time possible to put together a definitive list of something. And this week... Whoa, hold up. Hold up. This sounds like there's pressure involved. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You got to crack through. You got to give me answers right away. So hold up, hold up. What What you're telling me is, is like, what's the list? Is it like a top five, a top 10? What what kind of list are we looking at? Uh, This week, it's going to be a top 10. So a top 10... Of something. We're just, oh my god, fuck. We're going to, one, oh. pull it out of our asses, and two, it's going to be the best list ever. Definitively? Like, be like bitches, if you don't like it? <laughs> if you don't like it, email in and tell us why we're wrong, but uh, I'm pretty sure you will not be able to do so, because it's going to be the best list ever. It's the perfect list. The well, Press X hence perfect the name, list. The, what do we call it? The Press X perfect list? Is that what we're calling it? That's what we're calling it. Perfect list. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Pending a better just, name, you know, <laughs> uh, we're going with Press X Perfect List. <laughs> I'm, you know, I mean, it's just kind of, I'm feeling a little dizzy up here on my high horse, you know, looking down upon the lowly people. <laughs> my Press X Perfect List. <laughs> well, so what's our topic uh, then? <laughs> we're going to uh, expouse our knowledge upon the peons this week based on one of the releases, which was Secret of Mana. So this mm. week, we're going to come up with the definitive 10 best 
SNES RPGs. Fuck. Can I can I make the first pick? Can we well, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. What are we? We're we're gonna start at what? We're starting at ten. Uh, I, I don't know if we should go with an order. I think we should just have ten. Just Maybe spout off pick... ten. So we don't. So we don't need to give like a top ten. Just the ten best. Period. The ten best. Are we allowed to argue? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, okay. So let's just go around uh, the room, the dirt, the digital virtual room, and uh, come up with some tame, some names. Trev, I he I I heard him chomping at the bit. I have a feeling I know what he's going to say. I'm I'm going to go way out on a limb. We haven't even talked about it yet, but I'm going to pick Secret of Mana. <laughs> Secret you, of Mana. You, know what? you threw me I'm for a, a loop. I'm going to go with. Let's just let's just go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I thought Let's you were going to fuck with me, Trevor, <laughs> and I'm disappointed that you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm saving uh, Chrono uh, Tigger for later. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was never released to the West. It was a uh, it was a Japanese game. <laughs> it, was, it was a really <laughs> weird sequel. Chrono Tigger. Like, that one was, yeah, Chrono really Tigger odd. was. Black the market. most wonderful thing about tiggers is tiggers are wonderful things. <laughs> it was Tony the Tiger with machine guns. It was the awesome. That was just the best game. Ever. Uh, the weirdest it, part was that section where you could play as Piglet and uh, gone his own. It was it, weird. I'm just yeah, like right now I'm just picturing like I'm like how what would the box art be for Chrono Tigger? Oh my god! <laughs> I think it would be Tony the Tiger with a couple of AKs. No, no, like, I'm thinking dual, now like dual wielding. Like, if I mean, I'm, I'm going out on a limb here because I know that we don't have that many listeners just yet. But if you're artistic and you want to send us anything, any sort of art that would rep- represent Chrono Tigger, please, <laughs> please fucking do so. Even please. if you steal it from DeviantArt, we're cool with that. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. There's like, you can steal, yeah, steal it and claim credit if you can find it. I don't care, but I need to see what Chrono, what Chrono Tigger might actually be. All right, Sean, you got one. Uh, okay, so what did we, Trev? You were Secret of Mana, which I'm yeah. probably I'm not going to argue. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Final Fantasy three, um, or as um, re-released as Final Fantasy six, but Final Fantasy three. Listen to Paul. T- he's tapping that in. Like, click, 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 click. You got it. Yeah, and here's Final Fantasy 3 slash 6. It's, it's going in the definitive, the perfect list. 3 slash 6. <laughs> On the it. definitive word processor, Google Docs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Chrono Tigger. I got to do it. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I was leaving it for you because I know how much you love it. To me, that's like, that's got to be, that's a number one. That's my number one. I mean, you know, I know we're throwing things in at any any random number, but Chrono Trigger is the shit. I mean, there's there's a reason people get excited when they hear a game is like uh, an homage to Chrono Trigger or yeah. based in some way on Chrono Trigger or, you know, you know, like basically in any way using the name Chrono Trigger so people like you, Paul, can shit all over it because it's not actually Chrono Trigger. I am sick. I mean, it is... It is quite possibly the most perfect game ever created. It's up there. I, you know, I mean, the funny thing is, is to me, I wish we could take the dynamic and the way that Chrono Trigger worked and make it a modern game. Like I'm talking like pure and proper modern, like insane graphics, great, really developed narrative, voiceover work, all, all the things that we consider modern conveniences uh, of a game but with the same dynamic that Chrono Trigger had, I don't know if it's ever going to happen again. I mean, because everybody who's trying to capture it is doing it in retro style. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, there, there hasn't been an updated, like a pure updated version. Um, they're all trying to capture that magic, but you, you can't capture that magic again necessarily. I mean, without it looking like a copy. Well, we, there's a reason that Square's struggling so much with that Final Fantasy VII remake. It's fucking hard to do. Yeah, how are you, you going to remake that? I mean, just that's... the sheer amount of art and and the amount of content that you have to put into this thing is ridiculous. Well, it's a def- it's literally. I mean, when you talk definitive, it is def- it, it's a definitive RPG classic. You know, if we're looking at Final Fantasy VII, I mean, 
and to try and bring that into a modern age. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy at all. And then anybody who's trying to recreate that, the second that, you know, some dev team and some, you know, in some back room, you know, decides, well, we're going to let's make the modern version of a game like Chrono Trigger and let's do it up proper. Like you could immediately probably feel the weight of the world land on the shoulders of those people in that room. And they're like, fuck, really? Okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not easy, right? Nope. I mean, there's a reason that it is, like you say, I mean, it, it's damn near as RPGs go, like, w- perfect. It's a perfect RPG. Trev, hit me. Uh, I will go with, uh, let's see here, let's go with, on this harvest moon. Come on, Neil Young? Nobody? Not nobody? Neil Young? God, you're Harvest fucking Moon. old. We just wanted to let you go Harvest for Moon. a few more lines. <laughs> Harvest Moon. I'm locking in. That was on the SNES, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. It was. Yes. Harvest it Moon. Was. It was. It was. a good pick. It is a good pick. That's I wouldn't even pick, argue with you. It's a good you. pick. I won't even argue. Sean, go. Is it my turn again? It is. Oh, fuck. Uh, he's going to go with Lufia 2. No, fuck that game. <laughs> I, you know what? Actually, you know what's funny? Lufia 2 is like, you know, in terms of like ranked, like best Super NES RPGs, it's up there. It's just not a game that worked for me. I was always a big fan of the Dragon Warrior games. Uh, we're talking like we're going back a generation. We're going back to like the original NES and Dragon Warrior. Fucking blew my mind. So Dragon Quest V is probably out of the dragon warrior slash dragon quest titles that's the one i put put the most time in on the on the snes so dragon quest 5 gets my vote all right dragon quest 5 um i'm gonna go with earthbound Ooh, great fucking uh, game because that game classic. is just so weird it is we're so leaving weird, like the ultimate classics it. up to paul here yeah hey somebody's got to knock him out of the park here yep you bet I believe it's Trev's turn. What are we at? Uh, at? Does that take us to six? Have we uh, have we picked Super Mario RPG yet? We, well, have, we have not now. Wow, worth put it on the board. But that'll be number that, seven. That's a good choice. Yeah, Super Mario RPG was like that that perfect mix. It was Nintendo. It was developed by SquareSoft at the time. It was freaking great. It was. You know, and now, like, I realize that number seven sitting on me, and I don't, I, man, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd be, it might be hard pressed to enter a lot of people's top 10, to be honest, but Shadowrun was like one of the all time classics for me. Shadowrun is absolutely fucking fantastic. I mean, it was good enough that I'm really, I'm really upset that they fucked it up in like the current or last gen when they redid like, wasn't it like a first person shooter shadow run? I mean, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you're going to hear my keyboard doing the ticky tickies right now because (sighs) they did the shadow run, um, new version and it was, it was bad. It was really bad. This is the first pick that I'm going, really? I loved it. You know, well, that's the thing. That's the thing. You know what? These types of lists are so purely subjective. I mean, I love, I always love. No, 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 no. This is the definitive 10. Our list is definitive. So I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand behind my pick. But back in my days of journalism, you know, like when you would write a list and you would get some fucking shitlord in the comments that basically told you you're the worst fucking human ever because either one, you picked a game you didn't you like something, yeah. or two picked a game or didn't pick a game that they love or whatever. A lot of times these lists are so freaking subjective, but man, shadow run is like, it's, it's like, it's like, I don't know, man, for me, it was like, you got your magic and fantasy side of things, but then you've got your cyberpunk cybernetic type type thing and it was like the perfect amalgamation of all the things that I loved at the time. I mean, that's why I'm ex- excited about a game like Cyberpunk. I mean, I'm a genuine Cyberpunk fan, right? So, yeah. I don't you know, fuck you guys. Shadowrun is on my fucking list and if you don't fucking like it, send me an email and argue. I don't care. Do it. Cuz this list is fucking definitive like you said. 
This shit is the definitive list. <laughs> there you go. It can be at number 10. I don't care. You said we're just picking games until we get to 10. So you could throw right. it at 10, but Shadowrun is fucking rad. All right. Sure. If you want to argue with Sean, you can send an email to us at pressxpodcast at gmail.com. Pressxpodcast at gmail.com. Okay. You know, I, I, I quickly, I quickly uh, went to the Googles. And it sent me uh, to uh, – uh, there is a website, Ranker, that kind of ranks things. And people get to kind of vote on them. And uh, Shadowrun is sitting currently as for best uh, Super NES RPGs. And this is the people speaking around the world. <laughs> the peoples. Yeah, it's at 23. So it just tells me that a lot of people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> I mean, that's far from definitive. There's only one definitive list, and that's that is the list. Press X perfect list. Perfect. The perfect list. Perfect. That's right. So listen to Paul. Send an email if you want to argue with me. you damn right. All right. That's eight. I'm going to pick number nine right now. And that is going to be Secret of Evermore. Ooh. I never played that one. Me neither. And it's freaking cool. You're a kid and you got a dog and you're looking for your sister and you go back in time and you go forward in time. You go around in time. You do some stuff. It's really good. In time. So it sounds to me like Bill and Ted's uh, excellent adventure at this point. It's cooler than Keanu Reeves. Let's put it that way. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) The only reason that came to mind is I literally watched that with my kid last night. We were trying to find movies on Netflix, and I'm like, fuck, I'm bored with all the new movies. And we're like, all right, we're going to, like, Movie Central Encore or some shit, like, all, all the old movies. And uh, me and the wife are like, we're totally watching Bill and Ted. And I literally, I remember looking over at my kid and watching his eyes roll into the back of his head. And he's like, you're not going to make me watch one of your <laughs> lame-ass movies, are you? And at the end of the movie, we're like, did you like it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I really liked it. <laughs> Ziggy Piggy, Ziggy Piggy. <laughs> All right, Trev, anyway. hit me with number 10, the last one on the list. Ooh, see, I really want to get Zelda in there, but we've had this argument uh, during our Game of the Awards uh, video cast. Is Zelda an RPG or is it an action adventure? I think we've... If you're trying to throw Link to the Past in, it's it's that is not an RPG. Right, well... That's what I was thinking I would get in the list. But if we're not going to go with Zelda, uh, let's go with Breath of Fire. Which is a great game. Breath of Fire 1 or Breath of Fire 2, Trev? I would go with 1. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Moreover, going back to Link Link to the Past, I mean, I would imagine that people are going to be like screaming like, what do you mean? to the past why is it not on a top 10 or a, a best super nes rpgs it, it seriously i mean let's talk about that for a second it is not an rpg that's an action that's an yeah. action adventure it's not an rpg in the there's standard no leveling, rpg there's progression none of that stuff link to the past is an incredible game but it is not a true rpg exactly so if like if you're choosing top 10 snes games of all time yeah it's there but RPG, it's not an RPG. Okay. That's 10. <laughs> we're done. That's it. It's over. I love how nobody wanted to argue. They're like, yep, all right, we're good. <laughs> I mean, I, I argued Shadowrun very briefly, but you gave a very compelling argument, Sean. Nah, I just swore a lot. <laughs> is that how you do it? <laughs> yeah. The secret God to my damn. success is saying is, is 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 F everything. Just every other word, drop an F bomb and people take you seriously. I'm going to remember Either that, that or they week. just think you're an idiot who doesn't have a handle on the English language very well. I'm going to remember that for next week. But for now, we have the definitive 10 best SNES RPGs in the Press X perfect list. Those are Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy 3, Harvest Moon, Dragon Quest V, Earthbound, Super Mario RPG, Shadowrun, Secret of Evermore, Breath of Fire, and the number one best SNES RPG, Chrono Tiger. Chrono Tiger! (laughs) I feel like we need to fill people in on how that came about. Or do we really? I mean, basically, Trevor didn't know the name of the game. (laughs) Well, I was into my cups. That's the story. We were playing a game. (laughs) That's right. You were into your cups that night, weren't you? Into your cups, playing a game, and uh, yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> it wasn't, you know, I mean, you've had many glowing moments over the years. That just wasn't one of them. But it was funny. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, Trevor. Oh, no. I do remember some pretty hearty belly laughs after that. <laughs> it was pretty funny. You know what makes me really sad? Is no. that well, it's just really sad for me that right now, after having, you know, this this wonderful hour and a half or so of conversation, that uh, we have no emails. There are no emails. <sighs> God damn it. I thought we were on a pretty good streak, you know, having never had a week without an email. But y- you've let us down, listeners. You didn't send anything. We have nothing well, to talk about. Maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe that spurred the Press X perfect list. We want people to argue with us a little bit or just, you know, no, or just ask questions. We miss the emails. Just go for it. Send them in. Press X podcast at gmail.com. Even if we don't talk about it on the podcast, I can guarantee you that I will be reading them. <laughs> so say whatever you want about Sean. Yeah, I don't have access to this email. Who knows what people might be saying about me? Yeah, well, you know, them's the breaks, boy. <laughs> Something tells me you've already suppressed some emails. You're like, that Sean guy is an asshole. Why do you let him on the podcast? <laughs> like, we're not going to put that one on. We're not going to talk about that one on the that show. information if that was the case. <laughs> I bet you would. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this episode of Press X the Podcast, the love edition for February 14th, 2018. Mm, brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> We've been Paul, Sean, and Trevor, and we thank you very much for listening. If you liked what you heard, please like it, share it, give us a review on iTunes, we love you. Please come back. Do all the things, all of them. Yeah, do all the things. things. Share it, comment, rate it, review it, all those things. Yep, we'd love to hear your feedback too if you heard something you didn't like, but I can't imagine why that would be. Um, But until next time... We've been Paul, Trevor, and Sean. Signing off. Peace out. We'll continue to be Paul, Trevor, and Sean until next week. We'll do that. All right. Peace (laughs) out. Bye.